ScottGames.com was the hub for Freddy's related teasers and media before the eventual cataclysm that would befall the community. But that's the present, what about the past? Around early September 2015, Scott Games had a thank you message with the Freddy's cast front and center, but slowly, the animatronic started to... change shape. WHAT THE- FNAF World was released in 2016 and is technically Legacy of Flan 5. It was made because Scott was like, Hey, I like to make games that aren't Five Nights at Freddy's. Why don't I make something else with this stupid fucking brown beret? Thus, FNAF World was born. I feel like I can safely say that FNAF World is the most divisive Freddy's game to date. It's not like Security Breach where it's black and white, you either hate it or you don't. FNAF World is like this weird gray sludge that cannot truly be described without going into metaphysics. Due to the incredible amount of backlash Scott Cawthon received that can only be compared to the aftermath of giving Freddy Fast Bear or Freddy Fast Cock, FNAF World was taken off of Steam. Scott was then all like, guys, I'm sorry, please don't kill me, I'll update the game, please. And then it was re-released on Game Jolt, then Update 2, yada yada yada, you know the story. But did you know that FNAF World had a mobile port? Did you also know that the mobile port was taken down less than 24 hours later? Well, now you know. Before we talk about the mobile port, I feel like I should talk about FNAF World itself. And this is not just an excuse to talk about the game. Not at all. So FNAF World is like an RPG, but not really. Your attacks are on a timer, and once you use an attack, you must wait for the timer to reach zero. The only problem is the timer seems to have a mind of its own. Sometimes you can attack faster, other times you are dead in the water. The enemies have their own timer and seem to be faster than you, but it might also be bullshitting, so... Your party gains experience and FAZ tokens after every battle. Experience lets you level up, which increases your health and damage output. FAZ tokens are used to buy armor, bites, and a round in the fishing minigame. Bites are little critters that you can equip, which all do something different in battle. A chance at instant death, health regen, damage reduction, they are all useful. Besides bombs, don't... Don't use the bombs. Randomly after battles, you can encounter a new party member. If you defeat them, boom, new ally. The best part of FNAF World is the playable characters by a far margin. There are a lot, but they all fall under a few categories. There's fighters, healers, support, and miscellaneous. You get to make your own dream team. You want a team with your favorite characters? Go ahead. You want a team that heals itself in an infinite feedback loop? Sure, I guess. You want a team that gambles on whether you instantly kill the enemy or do nothing? Okay. You want the crack team, Nightmare Squad? Do it, fucker! The game is also very very bright. The overworld was originally an 8-bit style thing like an arcade machine that got changed to Cylinder Nightmare in the re-release. I honestly wish the game kept the 8-bit overworld because it's so much more pleasing to the eyes than whatever this is. It's like what Pop Goes Arcade tried to do but did it good. You got plains, snow, cave, water, graveyard, circus, kingdom hearts, final mix, Halloween town, and the flip side. Don't go more than three layers down or you'll fucking die. Go through the worlds, fight bosses, kill Scott Cawthon, the end. It's a really easy story to follow if you just go for the base ending, but there's lore. There are six endings of FNAF World. Some of them are incredibly easy to get, others require a tad bit more effort. The normal ending and true ending are a part of the same coin. The normal ending just has you play through the game on normal difficulty. The true ending involves the same thing except you play on hard mode, which lets you fight against Scott Cawthon himself. If you manage to go past three layers down in the flip side, you are rewarded with an ending in a meeting with old man consequences. If you decide to put Fredbear as the first member in your party, you'll receive the universe end ending, as there can't be two Fredbears in the same space at the same time. FNAF World has a secret boss in the form of Chipper's Revenge and is arguably the hardest enemy in the entire game. If you beat him, you get an ending. Update 2 starts with you talking to a man at a desk before Fredbear asks you for help. At the end of Update 2, instead of fighting the perceived antagonist Purple guys, you fight Chica's Magic Rainbow before talking to the man at the desk again. And for the first time ever, we get to see the first instance of Baby before the man at the desk takes a nice sweet little nap. And finally, when talking to Fredbear, if you decide not to progress, Fredbear turns all fucked up in 8-bit and tells you to find the clocks. Each clock parallels the minigames found in FNAF 3. After you find all the clocks, you get a cutscene that seems to mimic the ending of FNAF 4. And that's about it. I wish FNAF World had more updates, but sadly, people just did not like it. I like it, and I I always will like it, but this is all there is to FNAF World. Besides the mobile port, that is. I have no clue why the mobile port exists, and I don't think I ever will. Also, I'm pretty sure this game is responsible for Scott Coth and never touching FNAF World again, but I might be wrong, so disregard everything I just said. If you thought the base game FNAF World was a fever dream, oh boy, do I have something to show you. So, take FNAF World, make it worse, 
and then make it worse. I'm not sure why the entire game has these weird grid lines everywhere. It feels like something happened when the game was ported over the Android, but I can't say for sure. For some reason, all of the playable characters' animations are two times faster, and every enemy has no animation. Only DD and Fredbear are safe from this. Also, I'm not sure if this is supposed to happen, but multiple times random pizza wheels would go by the screen. It's also super laggy, and sometimes it stays on the victory screen for longer than it should be. Compared to the original game, Freddy's walking speed is incredibly slow to the point where it makes the game twice as long. The game is incredibly buggy to the point where it would crash constantly and my save file was deleted because I closed the game wrong. So there is some stuff featured in the port that I won't be able to talk about because I'm not playing the game again. You can't make me! The only thing that makes this game better than the original is the dialogue. Anything that could be slightly described as serious has been replaced and makes the game 10 times better than it would be. I can hear Anim dude talking from here. You need to hurry. It's like nails on a chalkboard. You need to beat that fool upside the head with a chump stick. Everything depends on it. I mean, he's not even the final boss anymore. It's been replaced with a rainbow. How humiliating. At one time, I mailed myself in a box to my grandmother looking like this. I jumped out when I was like, boo! Yeah, R.I.P. I always knew this guy who would put ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise all on the same plate together. Then he would stir them all up into an orange goo. People like that are the real monsters. The new writing is on a level where it's not funny, but it's still funny, you get me? Like, it's not gonna make you laugh your ass off, but it's not going to make you stone-faced. It's a smile kind of funny. The mobile port could have been good, but it's just not. I find it incredibly funny that no one talks about this because I feel like it should be studied. If I'm being completely honest, and I am, the Garden of Bayban mobile port is more competent than this. I'm sorry, it just is. I like it, but only because of how bad it is. I'll see you on the flip side, but make sure not to go more than three layers down or you know what will happen.